Well, good morning, everybody. This is Linda. It's Friday morning. I hope you're all doing well. Um, we've got a little bit of marine layer, um, but it looks like that's going to burn off. Good day to get out in the garden a little bit, take a walk, or in my case, go up and watch a baseball game. <laughs> my son is coaching the Anderson Valley Panthers, the varsity baseball team. Uh, and they have a game this afternoon, so I'm going up to watch the home team. Let's root, root, root for the home team, right? <clears throat> All right. Well, this morning we are here to do our daily devotions for individuals and families. And as always, we start in our Book of Common Prayer on page 137. If you don't have a Book of Common Prayer, that's fine. You can just close your eyes and listen along and come along for the ride. As always, we start with a portion of Psalm 51. Whoops, everything just fell out of my prayer book. A portion of Psalm 51. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <laughs> Our reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke. And this is, well, the daily office readings, the, the lectionary for the daily office is, not quite as steady as the, the lectionary for Sundays. So we're picking up where John Cullum left off on Monday with Jesus talking with his friends. And now, the Transfiguration. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, this is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at that time what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. So, as I said a minute ago, um, Actually, before I go back to that, I just want to comment that yesterday was the Feast of the Ascension. So it's interesting that we had yesterday the Ascension and that reading about Jesus ascending, and now we've got the Transfiguration with all of this, these appearances and clouds, and it's quite a, quite a time we're having. So, um, as I said earlier, our reading this morning uh, takes place eight days after Jesus has a meeting with his disciples discussing who he is and what will happen to him. Jesus asked them, who do the crowds say I am? And the disciples tell him they've heard people say he is John the Baptist, Elijah, or a returned prophet from long ago. And Peter declares, Jesus to be God's Messiah. And then Jesus warns them not to tell anyone about this. He goes on to describe his death and resurrection. They must take up the cross and follow him. 
Whoever loses their life for me will save it, and so on. I wonder, why does Jesus sometimes tell or warn people not to tell anyone what they have seen or heard, and at other times he says, go home and tell your people what happened? We have heard the stories about healings. Sometimes it is to be kept secret, and other times not. We've heard the stories about the thin space when there is an encounter with Jesus and God. For example, at Jesus' baptism, a dove descends, the clouds part, and a voice is heard. No one is told to keep this a secret. And today we have the amazing story of the encounter up on Mount Tabor. Jesus, Elijah, and Moses together. Jesus is dazzling white, even more so than Moses. A life-changing moment for these three disciples, and yet they're told not to say anything. Another, I wonder, does Jesus choose these three men only to take with him because he knows they will be the cornerstones for the new church, the new covenant? Peter, James, and John will take Jesus' message out to the world to continue the teaching, preling, pre, excuse me, teaching, preaching, and healing that Jesus had begun in his ministry. He knows they will face adversity, and their faith must be strong. This experience up on Mount Tabor would surely solidify one's faith if they had any doubts before this. Eight days prior, they were discussing among themselves who Jesus is, and now they have heard, this is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. It would be hard to have any doubt after witnessing something like that. And up until now, Jesus has looked very much like any other Jewish first century man. Nothing set him apart in appearance from his disciples and followers. The encounter on Mount Tabor is a sort of nod to the Old Testament descriptions of the presence of God. My Bible notes call it the brilliant glory. Our three gobsmacked friends certainly get a taste of that, and our dear Peter wants to hold on to the moment for as long as possible. Let's make huts and hang out for a while. I know, when I've experienced that thin space, that liminal space, I want it to last and last, and yet it doesn't. I can't build a shelter and hang out for a while, as much as I want to. So I try to sear the memory in my heart and soul so that I can retrieve it whenever I want to. I'm sure many of you have had an experience like this, like Peter, where you want to hold on to something that is just outside your grasp. What is your strategy for holding on to such a moment? Do you write it down? Tell someone else? Revisit it over and over and over until it is etched in your heart? All of the above? I guess, in a way, no matter what, what technique we use, it is like trying to capture lightning in a bottle. Such experiences can offer such hope and comfort that we simply don't want to let them go. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through Jesus, excuse me, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And now this morning, we'll gather ourselves in prayer. Such good news we had yesterday that the CDC has said if we are vaccinated that we no longer need to wear masks. Uh, we had a celebratory moment yesterday in the parish hall with a few of the women who had gathered for an ECW luncheon. And as our phones were getting the notification, off came our masks. It was quite delightful. We are coming finally 
we can see the other side. We're not quite out the other side, but we're, we can see it. So in our prayers this morning, please, gracious God, let us give thanks for those who have created the vaccine, who have participated in the rollout <coughs> of the distribution of the vaccine across the country and across the world. We also pray for those countries around the world who are not doing well with the vaccine, such as India and Brazil. We pray that they too can get a new foothold on the vaccine and with mass distribution to protect as many as possible from this deadly, deadly pandemic. And especially those two countries where they're running out of supplies. We certainly know what that felt like in the U.S. Uh, at the outset of this last spring as they were worried that the hospitals would become overrun and some were in New York. Let us pray that those countries also will find the success that we've had in the U.S. We want to thank the leadership for making this happen, for Joe Biden, for Governor Gavin, for James, Evelyn, Mike, Jared, all of our elected officials who are truly representing us, their constituents, in these times. We also pray for Israel-Palestine. This conflict is getting so close to such sacred an antiquity and sites that are beloved both by Christians, Jews, and Muslims, all three alike. We pray that they find reconciliation with each other so that this can stop. And we pray for right leadership in that area to make that happen so that no more lives are lost. So we pray for peace and tranquility in the world and for salvation for all. May we seek and find your presence in all people. Christ have mercy. We also want to pray for those who've been commended to our prayers for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Tammy, Ginger, Cynthia, George, John, Susan, Juanice, Jill, Michael, that was my phone ringing, Deborah, Robin, Marjorie, Anne, Suzanne, Richard, Alice, Christine, Tony, Claire, Carol, Jamie, Ashley, Vernon, Mark, Wanda, Sheila, Catalina, Jane, Carl, Helmut, Marge, Rosie, and especially prayers for Christian Olson, who is having surgery today down at Stanford. We pray for Christian as well as his medical team and the care that he receives. Christ have mercy. And we also want to pray for those who've died, especially Drew Coleman and Joyce Cafferata and her family who grieve, and others on your hearts this morning. Christ have mercy. And now let us say together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us not our trespasses and forgive those who have trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, sorry, I got a little distracted by the phone ringing. All right, my friends, and now here's our colic to send us on our way this morning. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, friends, thank you for being with me. I hope you have a great day um, and a great weekend. 
I hope to see you, uh, if you are St. Paulites, I hope to see you on Sunday at St. Paul's at 10 o'clock. Uh, we sort of are doing a hybrid uh, service. Some are in and some are out, and so that makes it great that we can accommodate as many as possible. Um, the weather's cooperating with us. It's not too hot by the time the service is over. So, um, And then we have canopies and shade, and feel free to bring a sun hat um, if you like. But um, it's glorious to be able to gather together, to sing together, to be together after such a long time. All right, friends, you take care. God bless. And again, thanks for being with me. So long.